So it's that time of year again where I look through tons and tons of blog posts and see all these new technologies such as quantum computing and all these kinds of things that take years and years of experience to actually learn at a high level or learn at a granular level or learn at honestly any level at all. I always hate that, you know, I, I'm not sure if I hate it, but I always dislike that every single year a list of technologies comes out that you should learn and it's always about 10 technologies long right and i understand the reasoning behind that because you have to give people a list of technology and they can kind of pick from it whatever they want but i also think that it's pretty helpful to pick you know three or so technologies and kind of run with it from there you know i think that's an easily digestible thing to do in a year, especially if those technologies aren't three programming languages. I wouldn't expect someone to be able to read, you know, to learn three different programming languages in a year. My goal is to usually learn one a year, but three technologies in general, whether it's a technology methodology, a front end framework, a back end framework, a database, um, you know, or an actual programming language itself. I think that's a pretty substantial goal, but I think it's a goal that you can actually accomplish. And at the end of the year, you'll look back and you'll know how to hopefully build an entire project and you'll have an entire different skill set in your repertoire. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you the three technologies that I'm going to be learning in 2021. All right, so before I get started with this video, make sure you guys check out my Twitter, Discord, and all those kind of social links in the description below so you can keep up to date with my content. I'm going to be pumping out a ton of content coming up uh, the next couple months. I'm going to try to put out two videos a week. I know it's a really bold strategy, but just bear with me while I try to do that. And any feedback you guys have is really, really helpful. But enough with the actual social promotion. Let's hop right into the video with my three technologies that I picked to learn in 2021. So for my top three technologies, one of them is gonna be pretty vague at the outset, but I think it's really, really helpful to actually know a skill like this if you're gonna be trying to get a job in cloud security engineering, cloud engineering, or software engineering. Any sort of technical discipline where you're gonna to have to be writing code and you're gonna be interfacing with you know clients where you're gonna be provisioning things for users such as you know, pieces of software or visualization boards or anything like that, this is going to be really, really helpful. And that technology is going to be data science. Now, like I said before, super broad data science can mean so many different things, whether it's you're using, you know, pandas with Python, you're doing data science with machine learning. But for me, the reason that I want to learn data science in 2021 is that I want to get more proficient with data science in Node.js and React. Now I know that might freak some of you guys out, and before you freak out, I just want to inform you that Node.js is actually a, must, a faster language technically than Python, so let's hold our horses right there with you know the speed talk and all that. But the reason I want to learn Node.js and React with data science and data visualization more so is so much of the internet is run by JavaScript. You can almost guarantee that any of the websites you are using in today's you know, ecosystem or any of the websites that you're pulling up today, aside from, I think, Reddit are all made in JavaScript, right? Most of the, uh, most of the internet is technically owned by JavaScript. So I know it's not the, you know, hackers preferred tooling or the hackers preferred programming language. And I know it's sort of a, like my discord calls me a soy dev. If you're not learning JavaScript right now, I really think that you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage going forward. Now I know that React can be super, super bloated with all the libraries that they want you to use. And that is part of the problem in, in and of itself. You really have to learn what libraries you should be picking and leave out all the other bloated ones. And that takes a ton of Googling. I understand how it can be really, really annoying. Whereas with Python, you know, anytime someone talks about data visualization or just being a data generalist, they're gonna be speaking about NumPy and pandas. It's, it, you know, it's right off the bat, everyone knows exactly what you're talking about when you're talking about Python data science, NumPy's, Pandas, machine learning um, with, you know, PyTorch or anything like that. But I really think that when you sift through a lot of the nonsense libraries and the really, really bloated libraries that React and Node.js and JavaScript in general have, you get down to some of the meat of the actual function of itself, which is data visualization. And it really doesn't help that almost all the internet is running on JavaScript. That means you're gonna have a lot more functionality, a lot more capabilities, and a lot more easy integrations with the things that you're using, whether it's in the browser or you're making your own applications. So my first technology is going to be data visualization or being a data generalist with JavaScript, more specifically Node.js and React. 
Now the next technology that I'm going to talk about might come as a surprise as well, and that technology or programming language is going to be Golang. Now the reason for this is a lot of the infrastructure that I'm working with as a cloud security engineer, as a cloud engineer, as a DevOps engineer, is all written in Go, whether it's Docker or the Kubernetes controllers that go along with Docker. A lot of infrastructure, whether it's in the cloud or whether it's specific microservices or services, are written in Golang. It's a great language. It has automatic typesetting where you're going to actually have to, to declare exactly what kind of type that you want to be running and what kind of types that you want to uh, you want your variables to be declared as with the language. And I know that sounds like a hassle if you come from a language like Python, but myself coming from a language like TypeScript where the type declarations aren't required, you really run into a lot of bugs with your typesetting and your type mismatches that Golang and other type required languages really help you with. And on top of that, the AWS CDK is now, to support, now supporting Golang, as well as a lot of the SDKs and Lambda libraries that I use almost all the time in AWS. It's a really great language to get the speed of something like C++ with the readability of more of a Python or more of a Ruby type language language with uh, declarative typesetting as well, which is really, really helpful. If you guys don't know what typesetting actually is, I really recommend you look into it because I know when you first look at it, it's going to kind of seem like it's a little useless and it's just a little, you know, fluff or, you know, functionality that you might not need, but it really, really is useful when you're writing those giant programs that cloud engineering, lambdas, uh, SDKs, and the CDK can turn into because you're going to know exactly where your errors are coming from and you're going to know exactly what types of variables or types of data that you're pushing into your program and, and what you should expect. Now, the last technology I want to learn in 2021 is more of a methodology, but when you kind of see the overview of it, you'll realize exactly what I'm talking about. So as someone that comes from an infrastructure background where my job is to not only secure infrastructure, but make sure I have infrastructure in multiple regions that's going to scale correctly and, you know, a whole mess of other things, something called edge computing has really come to the forefront in the infrastructure community. And it at first was very, very vague because CloudFormation and CloudFront in AWS kind of handle this. But the actual methodology of edge computing is super helpful when you're talking about reliability and scalability in your actual infrastructure. Now, edge computing in this sense is going to include infrastructure as code, such as what you see with me writing in the AWS CDK or Terraform. And it's going to be about provisioning infrastructure, basically being automatically triggered from specific code. So what I mean by that is, say you have a user in Japan and your servers are technically set up in US East 2 or Virginia or you know New York, wherever they may be. Edge computing methodology is the methodology of every time a user logs in uh, to that specific server or to your specific application, you're gonna have a specific set of automation using infrastructure as code that's gonna go out and spin up that exact infrastructure at a server close to the client or close to the actual user. So they get low latency to your application and they also get to access all your features at really low latency. I don't mean to repeat latency a couple times there, but that's really the core concept of it. You wanna be able to get your content and your software directly to your users at very, very low latency so they get to use your application, have a good user experience with it, and then they'll come back for more. So edge computing is the process of spinning up servers automatically that are gonna be in the area of where the user actually is, giving them a great user experience. Now, I think this is super helpful when creating your own software because you know, it might not seem too crucial to us now, but when you're creating your own application and say a user clicks the login button of some sort of software, they're going to expect that that login button is going to redirect them within at least two seconds. I know people that are using Cloudflare that get a lot of complaints from their users when Cloudflare actually checks your DNS. We all know that that's good, that, you know, Cloudflare is doing its job, is trying to protect against DDoS attacks, but the actual low latency of clicking that button for a user is all they really care about. They want their content, they want it right away, and you as a DevOps engineer or as a cloud engineer need to be able to provide them that content, and edge computing is really going to help you understand this. Now, if you guys want to learn more about edge computing, I'll definitely leave some links in the description below. And a lot of them are just going to explain the broad overarching theory of edge computing. But edge computing, all it really is, is getting content to your users with as little latency as possible. So you're going to be having to spin up Kubernetes clusters or pods 
close to that user, say they're in Japan, say they're in Mumbai, doesn't really matter. You're gonna have to have automation that's gonna know where they're coming from, which is not too hard to have, but you're gonna have to spin up your entire tech stack in that location, and then as soon as that user's done, preferably what you wanna do is you wanna spin it back down. So edge computing can actually become a very robust solution, and it's not as simple as it sounds right away. So edge computing is definitely gonna be the third technology that I'm gonna be learning in 2021. Now, all of these specific technologies that I went over, they all have a purpose. So for example, data visualization is something that I'm trying to get better at. I'm trying to become more of a data generalist. So, and when I say data generalist, I, I only say that because I want to learn how to become a data scientist or, you know, visualize data better. And a lot of times people will go directly to the machine learning aspect because that's such a buzzword to, right now in today's times. But then you have Golang that's gonna help me spin up my infrastructure and use edge computing methodologies to you know, create a concept of how I wanna spin up my infrastructure and application. So for all of these different technologies, my plan, and I'll definitely create a YouTube video on this and keep you guys in the loop as I'm going through the whole journey. My plan is to create a data visualization app for specific data. I can't let you know right now what it is, but I definitely have a project coming out soon. And with that data visualization app, I'm gonna be using edge computing methodologies to get my data to the users as fast as possible because especially with high data requirement software applications, your users are gonna to wanna to be able to click and maneuver and manipulate the data that you're showing them as fast as they possibly can. So edge computing is gonna come in really, really, you know, it's gonna be really, really crucial to a kind of project like that. And then for the second technology that I brought up with Golang, I'm gonna be creating all my infrastructure in Golang because I think it's a really, really fast software service to use or a fast programming language to use. And it has tons of support, whether it's with Terraform, uh, whether it's with the CDK, whether it's with SDKs and AWS and Azure and Lambda. So when that project's coming more to fruition, I'll definitely let you guys know. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot from it. If you guys want to follow me on the journey of creating all these kinds of technologies and using them, definitely follow me on my Twitter. I'll put the link in the description below, like I said, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.